New research is offering a clearer picture of a large fault line off the West Coast. The authors of the report say the data will provide invaluable insight into what generates major earthquakes and tsunamis. It does very much inform um, the hazard and resilience um, mitigation efforts that, that people want to do. The research spans 900 kilometers from Northern California up to Southern BC. Scientists use sound imaging technology to create high resolution pictures of the fault. Using the results, they will try to model the likelihood and potential severity of future earthquakes. So what kind of impact would this have on people living in British Columbia? Let's bring in my next guest, John Cassidy. He is an earthquake seismologist with Natural Resources Canada and joins us tonight from Victoria, BC. Thanks for being here. Thank you for this. So to be here. John, after reviewing the study, what stood out to you? So it was a huge, huge survey. It was the first time the entire subduction zone, this is where an ocean plate is being pushed beneath uh, southern British Columbia, Washington, Oregon, and northern California. So the first time that we've seen uh, images and very extremely clear images of the seafloor in this region. So it's exactly the area where these giant earthquakes uh, occur, these magnitude 9 subduction earthquakes. And, uh, and gives us really the best information to date on, uh, on this region and, and how the fault um, that extends nearly 1,000 kilometers uh, is, uh, is segmented. It's actually not one long, smooth fault. It's actually four segments. And oh. uh, so seeing all of this for the first time is, is really quite remarkable. Okay, so this is the Cascadia subduction zone, correct? It is. This is um, is a, a fault that um, has experienced these magnitude nine earthquakes in the past. They're rare events. They occur typically hundreds of years apart. Uh, the last one that occurred here was in the year 1700. So it's been 324 years since we've seen one of these earthquakes. What, but, um, why are four? But it's, it, why are four different sections of, of more concern? I guess. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's really new information. So, what we think is that uh, generally the entire uh, fault would rupture in the form of a magnitude nine earthquake. So, uh, but it could be a series of smaller earthquakes, magnitude eights or eight and a halfs, for each of these segments over uh, you know months or even years apart. We've seen that, for example, in Sumatra. We've seen that in Japan, where sometimes these faults break. Um, twice instead of in one one single earthquake they may break twice um, but what what the um, this study has shown is that there are, the segments are different and the one closest to Vancouver Island is the one that is very smooth they found that the uh, the plate is the, this ocean plate that's being pushed beneath us is dipping a little gentler and that it's a little closer to the surface than previously thought. So all of that information uh, is directly useful, for example, for estimating um, tsunami uh, right. generation that you might expect from this type of earth. So it provides new and much more detailed, uh, the ability to calculate very detailed tsunami uh, models and what we might expect, but it also provides the opportunity to, um, to estimate ground shaking in a more accurate way than we could uh, years ago. So, so let's talk a little bit more about that. These, these hazardous earthquake spots are just under 1,000 kilometers off the coast of uh, BC. If an er earthquake were to happen, uh, what kind of impact would this have on coastal communities? Yeah, so the uh, the fault zone uh, extends for about a thousand kilometers from Vancouver Island south to California. So it's a it's a huge fault. Uh, it actually comes fairly close to Vancouver Island. It's about seventy five kilometers from Victoria, about one hundred and fifty kilometers from Vancouver. Um, so it's we, we know that this study gives us a good, a better image of of where the fault is. We use data like uh, GPS data to map out which segments of that fault are locked and storing energy for a future earthquake. So we're able to, um, to gain a lot of information from, by combining studies from 
onshore from offshore GPS data, seismic data, and uh, combining all of these to, to un better, un better estimate where the fault is storing energy and ultimately what we can expect in the, in the future, in the coming right. decades and or the coming centuries in terms of ground shaking. I, I, gotta, I gotta wrap up here quick, uh, John, but I do wanna ask you before I let you go, you, you know, we've heard this talk about the big one, this, uh, you know, catastrophic earthquake that could happen uh, in the Pacific Northwest. Does this study help w with any clarity in terms of how quickly something like that could potentially happen? Yeah, it doesn't tell us when one of these earthquakes would happen, but certainly it allows us to get uh, a better estimate, better modeling of what we can expect when that earthquake happens. So it's really valuable new information, uh, and it helps to direct some of the research looking for evidence of strong shaking, landslides, liquefaction from past earthquakes. All right, John, appreciate your time and your insight. That is John Cassidy, earthquake seismologist with Natural Resources Canada, joining us tonight from Victoria, B.C.